Hi, my friends. It's hard today. I hope you guys are having a great Saturday so far, and we'll be you'll be having a great weekend also. So we're back at the reading of the Spirit's book, and we are at chapter three, part two, chapter three. And chapter three has a title that follows: "The Return from the Corporeal to the Spirit Life." And on this chapter, there are a few topics. The one is the soul after death, its individuality, eternal life. The second topic is the separation of the soul from the body. And the, the last topic is the spirit's state of confusion after death. So we're going towards the soul after death. And that is the question 149. What does the soul become? come after death? Answer. It becomes a spirit again. In other words, uh, it returns to the world of spirits that it had left for time. Question, uh, question 150. Does the soul preserve its individuality after death? Answer. Yes, it never loses it. What would the soul be if it did not preserve its individuality? Question that follows. How does the soul preserve its individuality if no longer has a material body? Answer. It still has a fluid proper to it, which it draws from its planet and which retains the appearance of its last incarnation, the pair spirit. And then question that follows. Doesn't the soul take anything else from this world? Answer. Nothing more than its memories and the desire to go to a better world. These memories are full of sweetness or bitterness, depending on how the soul has lived its earthly life. The purer it is, the more it will comprehend the futility of what it has left behind on earth. Question 151. What about the opinion that the soul returns to the universal whole after death? Answer. Don't all the spirits taken together make up a whole? When you are in a group, you are an integral part of it, and yet you still retain your own individuality. Question 152. What evidence is there for the soul's individuality after death? Answer. Don't you have such evidence through the communications you receive. If you, were so, if you were not blind, you would see. If you were not deaf, you would hear. Because frequently a voice speaks to you and reveals you the existence of a being outside yourselves. And then the Kardec writes a note under it to explain better. Those who think the soul returns to the universal whole at death are wrong if they mean that it loses its individuality like a drop of water falling into the ocean. Nevertheless, they are right if by universal whole they mean the entire assemblage of incorporeal beings, of which each soul or spirit is a member. If souls were meld together into the universal whole, they would possess only the qualities of the whole and nothing would distinguish them from one another. They would have no intelligence or qualities of their own. However, in all their communications with us, they are revealed a consciousness of the self and a distinct will. The infinite diversity they display under all aspects is evidence of their individualization. If there were nothing after death except what is called a great whole absorbing all individualities, that whole would have to be homogeneous, and the communications received from the invisible world would, be, would therefore all have to be identical. It is obvious that we are dealing with distinct beings, for we need 
good and evil, knowledgeable and ignorant, happy and downcast beings of all natures, joyful and sad, frivolous and serious, etc. Individuality becomes even more obvious when these beings prove their identity through unmistakable signs and verifiable personal details related to their earthly lives. Furthermore, there can be no doubt about such individualities when they manifest as apparitions. The individuality of the soul has been taught theoretically as an article of faith, but spiritism makes it obvious to and to a certain extent material. Question 153. In what sense should we understand the eternal life? Answer. Only the life of the spirit is eternal. The life of the body is transitory and temporary. When the body dies, the soul returns to the eternal life. Question that follows. Wouldn't it be more correct to understand the eternal life as that of the pure spirits who no longer undergo trials because they have finally attained perfection? Answer. That indeed represents eternal happiness, but it is all a matter of words. You may call things whatever you want as long as you understand the words you use. Now, this topic that follows. The separation of the soul from the body. Question 154. Is the separation of the soul from the body a painful process? Answer. No. Frequently, the body suffers more during life than at the moment of death. The soul itself, itself feels nothing at death. The suffering that is sometimes experienced at the moment of death is pleasure for the spirit, for it sees that the end of its exile is at hand. Now, the Kardec uh, writes down a note. In a natural death, that results from the depletion of organic vitality due to age. Humans depart from life without even realizing it, like a light that goes out for lack of energy. Question 155. How does the separation of the soul from the body occur? Answer. Once the bonds that held the soul are ruptured, it disengages itself. Question that follows. Does this separation occur instantly and through an abrupt transition? Is there a well-defined dividing line between life and death? Answer. No. The soul liberates itself grad gradually. It does not escape like a captive bird that is suddenly set free. These two states touch and blend with each other. This way, the spirit disengages itself little by little from its bonds. They unravel. They do not break. And then Kardec writes a note under. The spirit is connected to the body during life by its semi-material envelope or pair spirit. Death is the destruction of the body, but not of the perispiritual envelope, which separates from the body when organic life ceases. Observation has shown that at the moment of death, the spirit's departure does not occur suddenly. It occurs gradually and may vary in speed according to the individual. For some, it is very quick indeed. And in such a case, one could say that the, moment that, of, that the moment of death is also that of liberation, which actually happens soon, after, soon afterwards. However, for others, especially those whose life has been materialistic and sensual, the separation takes much longer, sometimes lasting for days, weeks, and even months. This does not imply that there is any vitality remaining in the body or any possibility that it might return to life. It only means that an affinity persists, persists between the body and spirit, an affinity that always depends on the importance that the spirit has given to matter during life.
It is logical to believe that the more the spirit has identified with matter, the more it will suffer upon separating from it. On the other hand, intellectual and moral activity and elevated thoughts initiate this separation even during corporeal life. And when death finally occurs, the separation is almost instantaneous. All this is uh, the result of studies involving individuals at the moment of death and demonstrates that the affinity that persists between the, the soul and the body in some individuals can be extremely painful. The spirit may even experience the horror of decomposition. Such a case is exceptional and peculiar to certain kinds of death. Suicide, for example. Question 156. Can, we, can the definitive separation between soul and body occur before the complete cessation of organic life? Answer. Sometimes in the death throes, the soul has already left the body, which has nothing left in it except organic life. The individual no longer has any self-awareness and yet a faint breath of life still remains. The body is a machine that is kept going by the heart and it continues to live as long as the heart circulates blood in the veins and for that it does not need the soul. Question 157. At the moment of death, does the soul sometimes experience a yearning or an ecstasy entailing a for glimpse of the world it is about to re-enter? Answer. The soul often feels that the bonds holding it to the body are loosening and consequently it employs all its efforts to sever them entirely. Already par partially released from the matter, it beholds the future unfolding before it, and it enjoys the spirit states beforehand. Question 158. Can the example of the caterpillar, which begins by crawling on the ground, then shuts itself up in its cocoon, that in, uh, in its cocoon, in apparent death, to be reborn into a brilliant existence, provide us? an idea of terrestrial life, which is followed by the grave and then a new existence. And then the spirit answers. A pale idea. The image is good, but you must not take it literally, as you are always prone to do. Question 159. What sensation does the soul experience at the moment it realizes that it is in the spirit world? Answer. That depends. If it has done evil for the love of it, the spirit is at first ashamed for what it has done. However, it experiences something completely different if it has been morally upright. It feels relieved from a great weight and does not fear the most scrutinizing glance. Question 160. Does the spirit immediately meet those whom it knew on earth and who died before it? Answer, yes, depending on the affection they had for one another. They almost always come to receive, to receive it at its strives to return to the spiritual world and they may even help free it from the bonds of matter. It also sees many who it had lost sight of during its sojourn on earth. Additionally, it sees those who are in the errant states and goes to visit those who are still incarnate. Question 161. In violent or accidental death, when the organs are not yet debilitated by age or disease, does the separation of the soul and the cessation of life occur simultaneously? Simultaneously, sorry. Um, answer: Usually, so. In any case, however, the instant that separates them is very short. 
Question 162. After being beheaded, for example, does an individual remain conscious for a few moments? Answer. Frequently. It remains so for a few moments until the organic life is extinguished once and for all. However, many times the fear of death causes a loss of consciousness before the actual moment of execution. And then a Kardec writes the note under. This question refers simply to the consciousness that victims may have of themselves by means of the body and not as a spirit. If they do not lose consciousness before execution, they may preserve it for a few short moments, but they must necessarily lose it with the organic life of the brain. This does not mean, however, that the pair spirit has completely disconnected from the body. On the contrary, in all cases of violent death, in other words, when death does not result from a gradual extinction of the vital forces, the bonds that join the body to the pure spirit are more tenacious and complete separation is slower. Topic, next topic. The spirit states of, of state of confusion after death. Question 163. Upon leaving the body, is the soul immediately conscious of itself? Answer. Immediately. Immediately is not the right word. It remains in a state of confusion for some time. Question 164. Do all spirits experience the confusion that follows the separation of the soul and body to the same degree? And for the same amount of time? Answer, no. It depends on how evolved they are. Those who are already purified are almost immediately self-aware because of their detachment from matter during corporeal life. However, carnal individuals with impure consciousness, consciences retain the impression of matter much longer. Question 165. Does an understanding of spiritism have an influence on the shorter or longer duration of this confusion? Answer. Yes. Uh, sorry. It's a very considerable influence because the spirit understood what its situation would be beforehand. The practice of good and purity of conscience, conscience exerts the most influence, however. And then the author, the Kardec, writes a note. At the moment of death, everything appears confused at first. The soul needs some time to recognize itself. It feels dazed with someone walking... Sorry, it feels, it feels dazed like someone walking out of a deep sleep who tries to understand the situation. The lucidity of its ideas and the memory of its past returns as the influence of the matter from which it has just freed itself is extinguished and the, and the sort of fog had, that has obscured its thoughts is dissipated. The duration of the state of confusion following death varies greatly. It may last a few hours several months or even years. The ones who experience it for the least amount of time are those who have identified themselves with their future state during life because they immediately understand their position. This confusion presents a particular, a particular aspects depending on the character of the individual and especially depending on the type of death it uh, involved. In violent deaths, Suicide, capital punishment, accident, stroke, moral wounds, etc. The spirit is surprised and astonished. It does not believe itself to be dead. It stubbornly persists in asserting that it has not died. Moreover, it sees its body lying there and knows who it belongs to, but does not understand that it is now separate. It seeks out loved ones and speaks to them, but cannot understand why they cannot hear it. This illusion lasts 
until its separation is complete. And only then does it realize its situation and understand that it is no longer part of the world of the living. This phenomenon is easy to explain. Surprised by its unforeseen death, the spirit is stunned by the sudden change that has taken place. It still believes that death is synonymous with destruction and annihilation. And since it continues to think, see, and hear, it does not consider itself to be dead. This illusion is strengthened by the fact that it finds itself in a body similar to the, water, to the one it just left, and it has not yet ascertained its ethereal nature. Instead, it presumes that it is solid and compact like the other, and it is astonished when it's, it is pointed out that this body is not tangible. It is a phenomenon similar to that of some inexperienced uh, somnambulists who do not believe that they are asleep. They believe that sleep is synonymous to the suspension of the faculties, and since they can see and think freely, they do not perceive that they are sleeping. Even in cases where death has not occurred unexpectedly, some spirits display this peculiarity. However, it is more generalized uh, among those who had not thought of dying despite, despite having been ill. This leads to the curious spectacle of spirits who attend their own funeral as though it were someone else's, and who speak of it as though it in no way concerns them, until they suddenly comprehend the truth. There is nothing painful about the state of confusion following death for moral individuals. They are calm and their perceptions are those of a peaceful awakening. However, for those whose conscience uh, is not pure, it is full of anxiety and anguish. In cases of collective death, it has been observed that all those who have perished at the same time do not always see one another immediately. In the, con in the confusion following death, each spirit goes its own way or concerns itself only with those in whom it takes an interest. Guys, I stay for by now for here, uh, here, and I hope you guys have liked this chapter as much as I do. Uh, have a great weekend. A big kiss to all. God bless you. Bye bye.